Hi, my name is Jeff Kyle. I'm an oscilloscope specialist with Roden Schwartz, and today we've got a couple products we want to show you. The RT-06 oscilloscope, and we're hooked up to a Nicosense ME. This is an industrialized version of the Arduino from the folks at Arduino. They shipped this uh, device to me to check out, and uh, we've got it hooked up to uh, display here. The Arduino Nicosense ME is an amazing device. It's got a lot of different sensors. Uh, I've got it set up to measure uh, a lot of environmental uh, parameters like temperature, humidity, air quality, and I'm sending that information to the display here. And what I thought would be interesting is we're communicating that display over I2C bus, which is a very popular low speed interface that you probably have in your designs. Um, certainly if you're using a, um, an Arduino, that might be the case. And um, we're hooked up to the clock and the data line with the RTO oscilloscope and we're going to show some basic setup and debug for the I2C bus. So, so to start off here, we can see the, uh, the signals kind of flickering. Now what's going on with the device here is we're updating the display once a second. So once a second, we send a, a burst of data to the display to update all the information. And that's why we're intermittently on the oscilloscope seeing the signals flashing. So let's uh, first of all set up a stable trigger. Um, now on something that's infrequent as once a second, um, we'll probably want to turn off the auto trigger. So when a scope is in auto trigger mode, if it doesn't find the trigger after a certain amount of time, it's going to automatically trigger an update. And that's why we get sometimes the signals present there um, and sometimes it is. Uh, so we'll go into normal mode here and um, we set our trigger level appropriately here on channel one. And we can see now the scope is updating about once per second. So now we're getting a stable trigger because we put it in normal mode and set the appropriate level on channel one and we can see the display updating here. Now let's dial out the time base here. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just tap in here to change the time base. We're going to punch in maybe um, five milliseconds. And we can see we're capturing a lot more information. The other thing then in a scenario like this where you're triggering and you want to look at everything after the triggers, you might want to position that trigger to be uh, kind of left of screen here. So the other thing I'm going to do is go to the horizontal here change the reference points from the 50% to maybe something like 5%. And now it positions the trigger to the very edge of the screen and we can look at everything happening after that. Next, we'll, what we'll want to do is now that we have a stable trigger and we're seeing the burst hit information, is we'll turn on the, the bus decode. So we'll press the bus button. We'll go into I squared C and turn that on. Uh, here on this screen, you would configure the clock and the data appropriately. We've got the data pointed to channel one and the clock to channel two and the decode we can see is now working. So for instance, if we maybe stop this for just a second, we can use the zoom feature of the RT-06 to zoom in on detail. So we'll go ahead and do a zoom here, do a narrow sort of sliver, and then we can see each of the data bytes that are being transferred from the Nicosense ME to the screen. And uh, there's some cool things you can do in here with the decode. If I wanted to, I could go to display and I could show binary. So I could actually see the individual bits and how they're being decoded to represent the data values there. The other cool thing that I can do as well is let's take a look here at the display here. Uh, we've got a list of decodes down below here. And so if we scroll down here, we can see each of the different data packets that's transmitting the data from the, the processor to the display and we can see sort of a lister of all of that data information for each one of the packet transmitted. Um, now what you might want to do is sometimes you've got data decode um, uh, information there in the protocol decoding and you want to kind of correlate that to the waveform up above. There's a really cool feature in the RT-06. We can go into the settings here and we can turn on something called zoom coupling. What zoom coupling does is tie the, the blue line where we're highlighting the packet of interest uh, and correlating that to the time display up above. So let's close this menu and we can see as we go through the display here, let's scroll down a little bit further down and we can touch. We can see that that is locating to the area on screen so that we can correlate information there. Uh, this display is super powerful because we've got a full access to all of the protocol decoding uh, of the data being transmitted to the device. And then we can also see the analog waveform as well. So if there's any sort of signal quality issues with your I2C bus, uh, that'll be represented uh, on screen. Next thing that we can do is utilize a feature called history mode in the RT-06. 
Uh, the RT-06 is a, a super deep memory instrument available up to one gigapoint per channel on the RT-06. And so the cool thing is, is right now we're only utilizing maybe 10 meg of uh, memory capture. Uh, but the RT-06 has a great memory. It's, it's, um, it can remember multiple acquisitions over time, and it'll try to remember as far back in time as it can. So if we just let this thing run, I want to draw your attention here to the history count up above. And we can see that updating every time that we do an acquisition, once per second. It's about five, six, seven, eight. And it's counting up, and it's remembering all of these acquisitions. At any point, I can hit stop in the oscilloscope. I can punch into the history by hit pushing the history button. Uh, now I can go back and we can see that it acquired a total of 17 acquisitions. And right now we're located at the, the last one. But if I roll back the clock by adjusting the multipurpose knob, I can look at the prior acquisition, which happened exactly uh, 999.6 milliseconds previously. Uh, and I can go back in time, multiple clicks, to look at each of the packets that are being transmitted from the device to the display. So we've shown you a number of different uh, things that you can do with the uh, I2C interface. The one thing that I wanted to show you as well is we also have triggering capabilities. So coupled with the history mode, uh, I can go into trigger. Let's tap in. Let's go to shortcuts and go to set up trigger. And here we have the ability with the serial bus to do further triggering um, in I2C terms. So we can trigger on a start condition, repeated start. We can trigger on a particular address, for, uh, for instance. Um, this allows you to identify and trigger on very specific packets that are maybe rare in your setup. Uh, this, coupled with the history mode, allows you a very powerful way to kind of store qualify. Uh, it's kind of like a DVR for your oscilloscope, where you can isolate and pinpoint very specific packet activity that are rare in your setup. Now, this wouldn't really work with our particular setup here because we're transmitting to the same address on the same device every second. Uh, but in your setup, this might be a real powerful feature that you might want to take advantage of. Thank you for joining us. If you want more information on the RT-06, please go to roto-schwartz.com. If you want more information on the Nicholas Sense ME Arduino board, please go to arduino.cc. Thank you.